when it comes to glasses, there's a secret that most people don't know. Almost all the major brands of eyewear, I'm talking Prada, Chanel, Ray-Ban, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, Burberry, Oakley's, Coach, Michael Kors, Armani, Ralph Lauren, well, all those eyewear brands are being made by the same company. But it doesn't stop there. They also own the retailers that you probably buy from. So if you shop at Lens Crafters, Sunglass Hut, Pearl Vision, Target Optical, Glasses.com, well, your money ends up in the same place. And as you might expect from a company that secretly dominates an entire industry, the owner of the company, Leonardo Del Vecchio, aka the Godfather, is very, very rich. So rich, in fact, that he's now the second wealthiest man in Italy. But what makes this story even more fascinating is that Leonardo's life is a true rags to riches story. Born in Milan in 1935, Leonardo's father died five months before his birth, which left his mother alone with six children. Now, keep in mind that the Milan of the 1930s was wasn't the international fashion hub that it is today. In fact, it was an industrial city full of factories and smoke. Nearly half of the city's population worked in those factories and life was a real struggle. And so, as a poor single mother, Leonardo's mum just couldn't afford to take care of the whole family. When Leonardo was just seven years old, she made the heartbreaking decision to send him to an orphanage. And it was there, all alone, that Leonardo was forced into the world of work in order to support himself. At just 14 years old, he became an apprentice in a toolmaking shop and quickly developed a talent for working with small parts. One day, some eyeglass makers came down to the shop from Agordo, which was a town in Italy at the centre of the eyeglass industry at the time. They saw young Leonardo at work and they were so impressed by his skill that they invited him to come to work for them in their factory. And with no family, no support and nothing to lose, Leonardo took them up on their offer. For many years, his job was to manufacture moulds for the tiny pieces necessary for each pair of glasses. But he also had a vision of something bigger, a vision that he eventually made reality. In 1961, age 26, Leonardo launched his own glasses business. The company started out by doing what Leonardo knew best. They sold frames, and in fact, they didn't sell their own complete pair of glasses for another 10 years. But it was then that an idea changed the company's trajectory forever. You see, Leonardo began to see glasses not just as medical devices, but as fashion. That was a revolutionary idea, but it was perhaps his greatest gift. Before anyone else, he was able to take something that was previously seen as uncool and turn it into a must-have fashion symbol. And so, in the 1980s, he took that vision to Giorgio Armani. Armani loved the idea, and he accepted a licensing deal with Leonardo's company. That was a landmark moment, and the pair never Never looked back. It was the first of many, many similar licensing deals that changed not just Leonardo's company, but the entire industry. Now, the way that these deals work is the fashion companies give Leonardo's company, Luxottica, sketches and notes about their fashion lines. Luxottica then bring those concepts to life. They create the glasses, they manufacture them, and then they get to keep the vast majority of any sales. What's interesting is, even though the fashion companies have their branding and their logos on the glass, they actually only receive a small percentage from the sales. And since 1988, Luxottica has repeated these licensing deals with a long list of luxury fashion designers. The likes of Prada, Chanel, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace and Burberry are just some of the many brands that have helped make Luxottica into an international powerhouse. But Leonardo didn't stop there. In 2017, he merged Luxottica with the French lens manufacturer Essilor to create Essilor Luxottica. Now, the merger is what's known as vertical integration. That is, Luxottica, which still primarily makes frames, merged with Essilor, which makes lenses. And so, the two companies focus on different parts of the same supply chain. And as you might expect, that $49 billion merger has ruffled some feathers. Many experts argue that Essilor Luxottica now have a monopoly over the entire industry. They claim that the lack of competition is severely impacting customers. 
Now, so far, Essilor Luxottica haven't faced regulation, but with more and more people needing eyewear than ever before in history, and when you consider that about 70% of people in developed countries will at some point purchase a pair of glasses, it dawns on you that the 1.4 billion people who already wear Luxottica products may just be the beginning. So what does this all mean for you, the consumer? Well, the Luxottica battle with Oakleys acts as the perfect cautionary tale. I'm sure you've heard of Oakleys. Oakleys, right? Well, the biggest retailer of Oakleys, with over 2,000 stores worldwide, was historically Sunglass Hut. That was until Luxottica purchased Sunglass Hut in 2001. You see, Luxottica has bought out many of the optical stores that you've probably been to. Sunglass Hut, Lens Crafters, Target Optical, Pearl Vision. So now, not only does Luxottica own most of the products in these stores, they also own the stores themselves. Now, this ended up being a huge problem problem for Oakley. Once Luxottica took over Sunglass Hut, they told Oakley that they wanted to purchase their glasses at a much lower price. Oakley, as you can imagine, didn't want to lower their prices. So what did Luxottica do? Well, they refused to sell Oakley sunglasses in any of their stores. The Oakley share price fell 33% as a result of the dispute, and within a decade, they were taken over by none other than Luxottica. Now, you may or may not feel bad for Oakley, but what exactly does this kind of market dominance mean for you as a consumer? Well, how much did you pay for your last pair of glasses? According to CNBC, the average price for frames in the US is $238, while the average price for lenses is $113. But do you want to know how much they cost to make? Well, a good pair of frames can be made for between $4 to $8. Lenses cost about $1.25 to make. And I'm not talking about crappy lenses and frames. That's how much it costs to manufacture high quality products. So it doesn't take a lot of math skills to realize that Essilor Luxottica profit margins are huge. And it's even bigger when you consider that the Luxottica playbook involves moving manufacturing out of the US and into China, as they did after their takeover of Oakley, for example. Of course, there are alternatives. Online-based retail companies like Zenny and Warby Parker allow you to pay far less for your spectacles. And I mean far less, as little as $6.95. But Right now, these online competitors have a long way to go before they catch up with their Italian rival. In 2021, Essilor Luxottica did over $20 billion in sales. When you compare that to Warby Parker's $540 million, you see what I mean. And at 86 years old, Leonardo Del Vecchio is showing no signs of slowing down. Apparently, his idea of retirement is to continue to expand his global empire. I mean, to be fair to him, he did try to retire. In 2004, he brought in a CEO to serve as his replacement. But in 2014, he retook control of the company. I guess when you've built something as massive as Luxottica, it must be hard to trust anyone else to carry on building what you've created. Keep in mind that the Godfather, as his executives call him, is a man who seems absolutely driven by the desire to grow. This is a man who possesses little patience for anyone or anything standing in his way. Even the top staff in his company apparently bend over backwards in order to avoid offending him. As one former executive put it, quote, Honestly, he kind of rules by fear. His own daughter admitted that as a child, instead of feeling warmth and affection, quote, frankly, we were scared of him. And so, now firmly back at the helm, Leonardo Del Vecchio has embraced the future. In March 2021, the EU Antitrust Authority allowed him to purchase Grand Vision, a Dutch-based optical retailer operating 7,200 stores worldwide. So yeah, that means Essilor Luxottica's already existing network of 9,000 stores has just nearly doubled with that acquisition. And apparently, the eyewear tycoon is even pushing into brand new territory. He's now the biggest shareholder of Italy's most powerful investment bank, Mediabanca. And he's also a major shareholder in Generali, Italy's largest insurer. If reports are to be believed, in both of those companies, he's beginning to exert more and more influence over the day-to-day -day operations. And so, even with a net worth of over $30 billion, Leonardo is still not ready to hang up his hat. Hey, if you enjoyed this video about the Godfather of Glasses, I suggest you check out this video next. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.